structural racism, discrimination, it's within British society. We need to address the inequality. Most people see a typical London boy as someone who's rude, incompliant. All you see is the tip of the iceberg. If you talk to most boys who find themselves on the wrong side of the law, listen to their stories, very similar. They were excluded from school. They got into trouble. In the year leading up to April 2018, almost 5,000 people were admitted to hospitals in England after being assaulted with a knife or sharp weapon. However, this only includes those who made it to hospital, so the real number is likely to be higher. It is not a black and minority uh, ethnic communities problem, it's a society problem. So whilst it might be impacting on the BME communities the most, when we look at the root causes, poverty drives knife crime and violence. That's what fuels it, poverty, lack of opportunity and inequality. The violence needs to stop. When you look at the education system, it doesn't allow particularly black boys to thrive. They judge based on where they come from, what they look like. Um, so it creates this inequality before they even enter the mainstream for further education or indeed employment. A third of British children currently live in poverty. That's about 10 in a classroom of 30. Black and Asian children are most likely to be affected. It feels that like we're living in a parallel universe. So those who are drinking latte across the road, as long as it's not affecting them, they're doing nothing. We are an early intervention program that supports young boys from the age of nine to 16 who are at risk of exclusion. Children on free school meals are four times more likely to be excluded than those who are not. And over half of those currently in the UK prison system were excluded from school. If you talk to most boys who find themselves on the wrong side of the law, listen to their stories, very similar. They were excluded from school. They got into trouble. Hey, what's, no, no, what, what are we doing that's wrong? You're trying to come in and you're trying to leave. So who's the giveaway to who? None of these boys have been excluded from school but they have been identified as being at risk of exclusion. Between 2012 and 2017, the number of children permanently excluded from state secondary schools in England increased by around two thirds. We have to be very careful that they're not adults, they're children that need to be cared for, not punished. We are young leaders at the Southside Young Leaders Academy. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Those are your journals. Journal. Journals. Does anybody know what the meaning of journal? It's basically a boy's version of a diary. Good. A boy's version of a diary. So a girl can't have a journal? <laughs> all right, all right, write this down. We can talk about that another time. <laughs> We also provide a bursary programme that allows them to go to boarding school. What we do at Southside is we provide life skills, leadership skills, to prepare them as a whole person. The boys come to us because they're either referred by a school or by their parents. We do not stereotype. If five black boys are sitting on the wall, society wants to portray that they're in a gang. And it's just five black boys sitting on the wall. So it is about changing that narrative. Why are we here? To learn to more about boarding school. Understand about boarding school. Understand about boarding school, OK. The boys' reaction when they go on the trip is one that their excitement, they really are intrigued. They ask a lot of questions. So the environment that some of these boys come from, it can be hard push to find a bookshop to enable them to pick up a book and, you know, read more. We're here in the middle of nowhere. Okay, <laughs> all right. So how do the surroundings feel? Yeah, fresh, fresh. 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 Yeah. Okay. So what is your career aspirations? I don't know. You don't know? 
Okay. An actor, a lawyer, an engineer, or footballer. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to uh, King Edward's school, Whitley, and see about their experience at boarding school. I'm just joking. Yeah, Everyone wants to stroke the dog? No. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to outside London. I swear down, these places are so unpredictable. <laughs> it came out of nowhere. <laughs> there should be a sign that says Hogwarts. Really? <laughs> Today, the boys are meeting two pupils who have been at King Edward's boarding school for three years. They were both awarded places at the school as part of the bursary programme organised by Southside. The emphasis is not really where they're coming from. The emphasis is more where they're trying to get to. And that is a believable story for the, the boys. I think, well, they actually come from my neighbourhood. They look like me, so it's possible. The classrooms, even the classrooms, you, you, you notice the difference in like the attention you get from a teacher and the chance I, chances I have been given to like go to a university. Oh, I don't know, Oxford, Cambridge, King's College, all those schools. I feel like most, peop most people see a typical London boy as someone who's rude, like in compliant. All you see is the tip of the iceberg. The majority of the kids are just regular people that want to strive and do better. How many detentions have you had? <coughs> I've got better. Let's, let's say that. Answer the question. <laughs> I, you never, so, you never had the opportunity to shave your hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's sort of refreshing to go back into London so like you don't forget truly where you've come from. If I said, like, today, tomorrow, do you want to come to the school, would you say yes or no? Yes. It's a lot safer than my secondary school. Maybe next year I might come here. Going to one of these schools is going to change you as a person, change how you see life in a way, change how you think. Because when you have as much opportunity as you get at this school, you have a chance to be someone, you have a chance to not follow the stereotypes that people may see you as. You have a chance to be who you want to be. But that all comes with work, of course, but I feel like this has really changed my life as it's shown me what, what I can really achieve if I try. Impact on the child being excluded, they've started to feel that um, nobody wants them. That's the bit they understand, that you've rejected them. The statistics show it hasn't been a positive outcome for most of these young people. If we don't get there before they're excluded, some end up in people referral, people referral to young offenders, young offenders to mainstream prison. The average cost of keeping somebody in a young offenders institute for a year is £75,000. For that same year, it costs £30,000 to send them to a boarding school like King Edwards. I want to be clear that boarding school is not the answer to everybody's situation. My point is that we need to invest in young people now if you want them to be useful and positive in, in society. We need to invest in these disadvantaged communities, turn them into thriving communities, create leaders that will produce more leaders. And I believe that is, a, a, it's not the solution, but it's one of the solutions. If they are, are told that they're inadequate, we have to teach them to conquer their deepest fear. They are bright, they are powerful. Throughout my secondary education, they didn't encourage me to be a lawyer, doctor or anything. They had low expectations. So you have to provide them with the tools and then you have to instill in them self-belief. They have to believe in themselves. They come to us as a boy and they're moving towards manhood. There's only that small window that you're gonna be a boy. We've got to teach them how do you go about navigating yourself around the world that you live in. <laughs>